Elrond was born in 532 of the First Age to his half-elven parents, Earendil and Elwing, who chose to be among the firstborn or the elves. He was also the twin brother of Elros, who will eventually start the line of the Numenorians, the line of Elros. Elrond is half-elven. Thus, he, along with his brother Elros and his daughter Arwen, will be able to choose either to live among immortal elves or live among mortal men. The half-elven line started from Baron and Luthien. Luthien was the daughter of Thingol and Melian, the latter of witches and Maya of the race of the Valar. Luthien fell in love with Baron, a mortal man. After passing into the halls of Mondos the first time, she was given two choices after the quest of the Silmarils, to be released from Mondos and go to Valimar to live among the Valar or to return to Middle-earth and take Baron with her. Luthien chose the latter, and thus she would become mortal and her fates and Baron's were to be joined. Thus, she would start a half-elven family line and they will be known to have elves and men as ancestors. Elrond's parents would choose to be among the Eldar after Earendil would set sail and he and Elwing would be summoned to Valimar by Manwe. Elrond would go to Lindon at the end of the First Age. Lindon is a region in Osirion, west of the Blue Mountains. This name was adapted at the end of the First Age during the Great Battle, as well as mighty convulsions and a broken Beleriand due to the tumults from the fall of Thangorodrim. Along with many of the Eldar, Elrond, along with Gil-galad, dwelt there, lingering, unwilling yet to forsake Beleriand, where they had fought and labored long. The elves built their havens, naming the Mithlond, and they had built many ships. From the Grey Havens, the Eldar ever and anon set sail, fleeing from the darkness of the days of the earth, for by the mercy of the Valar, the firstborn could still follow the straight road and return, if they would, to their kindred in Erisea and Valinor beyond the encircling seas. The Teleri, or the survivors of Doriath and Osirion, established realms among the Sylvan Elves. However, a lasting realm was located in the region which men called Hallin, was the only place where elves of Noldorn race established realms beyond Erid Luin. Sauron would be rejected by Gilgalad in 1200 of the Second Age and would visit a region where he would be rejected by Celeborn and Galadriel. Then, Sauron would notice an obstacle in Galadriel. Finally, Sauron saw in Celebrimbor, the maker of the three elven rings, the anxiousness needed to rival the skill and fame of Feanor. Thus, for a brief period of time, Sauron had success with the Noldor and concentrating on Celebrimbor. He was able to get the smiths of Eregion under his influence and thus besiege Eregion. However, Celebrimbor repented and the Three Rings, as he had noticed Sauron's motives and designs. Celebrimbor was slain by Sauron as a result, but Sauron didn't get the Three Rings. As a result, Elrond founded Rivendell as a stronghold for the refugees from Eregion, drawing them away northwest. This remained an elvish stronghold throughout the Second and into the Third Ages. Thus, Sauron tried to invade Rivendell, but failed in the Second Age. After the last alliance of the Second Age, many elves dwelt in Rivendell, making it the chief dwelling of the High Elves in Eriador. Elrond bore the ring, Vilya, the Ring of Air, one of the three rings of the elves. Vilya would be used to heal the hurts in the Third Age. It was the mightiest of the three rings and would help Elrond's healing powers and deeds in Rivendell. He had obtained the ring from Gilgalad before he died, as Elrond was his vice regent in Eriador as part of the last alliance of the Second Age, where Gilgalad and Elendil fought and perished. Elrond would remain in Rivendell for all of the Third Age, the fading years of the Eldar especially in Middle-earth. For long they were at peace, wielding the Three Rings while Sauron slept and the One Ring was lost, but they attempted nothing new, living in memory of the past. Around 1300 of the Third Age, 
the witch king of Angmar was established in the northeast, causing danger to Eriador. During the reign of Arvalag I, which was when Arvalag the Mighty King tried to claim lordship over Rudor, Rivendell was besieged by Angmar. On 14 of 9 of the Third Age, after the incursion of Angmar into Eriador, the elves joined those of Lindon and Galadrim whom Elrond brought over the mountains, subduing the power of the Witch King. In 1974 of the Third Age, the power of Angmar rose again and the Witch King captured Furnest. Arvidui had hid in the tunnels of the old dwarf mines for a while. The end of the North Kingdom occurred a year later, and Aranarth, the first chieftain of the Dúnedain, had his son fostered in Rivendell as well as all subsequent sons of the chieftains. Across the Misty Mountains between Imladris and Lothlorien, Elrond wed Celebrion, the daughter of Galadriel and Celeborn. Celebrion would sail to the Undying Lands in 2509 of the Third Age after being waylaid in the Red Horn Pass and assaulted by the orcs while journeying to Lorien. She was rescued by their sons, Elodon and Eruhir, but already suffered torment before they were able to come to her rescue. While Elrond was able to heal her in Rivendell, she lost all the light in Middle-earth the year after the event. Years later, Elrond's sons fought the Dúnedain as orcs were multiplying in the Misty Mountains, later entering the Shire. During the quest of the One Ring and the quest of Erebor, Elrond stuck to his healing roles. Elrond symbolizes throughout the ancient wisdom, and his house represents lore, the preservation and reverent memory concerning the good, wise, and beautiful. It is not a scene of action, but of reflection. In the quest of Erebor, Thorin and company had visited Rivendell. He had befriended Bilbo as a result, which was why Bilbo spent his remaining days in Elrond's home after his 111st birthday. Just before the council, Elrond commanded the flood that would carry away the horses ridden by the Black Riders. His folk met the Fellowship on the way to Rivendell, carrying an injured and wounded Frodo. Thus, in both cases, after escaping from imminent pursuit of evil, the hero can go face it in a wholly new direction. In the council, Elrond traced the ring, spoke of Numenor, and recalled the ring bearing of Isildur, citing that he would refuse to listen to the council of Elrond and his people. Sauron was diminished, but not destroyed, his ring lost, but not unmade. The dark tower was broken, but its foundations were not removed. Thus, while the last alliance of the Second Age did not achieve its end, it ended in victory. Elrond was also Aragorn's foster father and demanded that he become the King of Gondor and Arnor before marrying his daughter, which Aragorn eventually will. And after the quest of the One Ring, Elrond, along with the bearers of the Three Rings, would no longer remain in Middle-earth as the powers of the Three Rings fade.